Over the years, I've done quite a few reviews on car diagnostic tools. And when Ansel came to me, I just couldn't say no because this scan tool is made both for cars and for trucks. And this is the Ansel V6 Pro HD. HD meaning heavy duty. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a quick look and see what we can find in the box of the Ansel V6 Pro with the HD kit. It comes with this very nice case, nothing is crammed in here and it's plenty of room for all the accessories. Here we can store the different heavy duty connectors for vehicle that require a different connection other than OBD2. On the other side of the case we can find more connectors, the user manual and the tool itself. It has a 8 inch touch screen and an 800 by 1280 resolution with Android 10 OS and a large 8000 milliamps battery. The display is nice and vivid and on the back it has a camera for taking pictures and attaching them to your reports. The wireless connection is made by Bluetooth with this VCI. This is the OBD2 cable that attaches to the VCI dongle. Also lots of connectors like the cigarette power cable, the charging cable, uh, this direct connection cables, many adapters and many other accessories. Always at startup an update is recommended both to the software of the tool and the vehicle brands. Here we can see the different connectors of the heavy duty kit and I must say that they are pretty good quality. The pins look nice and solid and they are individually labeled. Now let's jump into this car and run some diagnostics. Here we can see that the VIN auto detect is pretty quick especially on this VW. Now this is a 2010 Volkswagen Passat and let's see how fast it can scan the fault codes. Okay, so we've done the whole uh, system scan. As you can see, quite a lot of, uh, of errors in this car. Uh, I did it in about two minutes. So not the, not the fastest out there, but not important as long as we can find the useful and good information. So as you can see, quite a lot of uh, errors. We can see them like this as a list or we can generate or view the report we can do a generate it's doing a pdf file so you can uh, you can send it to your customers with all the errors you can do a pre pre a pre work and uh, after you worked on the car or if we go back we can go on the uh, on the desired module let's say we want to go to the transmission electronics see what we can find here we can see the fault code yep transmission control system electrical upper limit exceeded negative incidental and up here we have the repair help so if we have a small problem we can actually follow these steps and try and do a, a um, repair ourselves so possible symptom would be the um, the check engine light will be activated and uh, we got also possible causes and possible solutions replace the control module control module failure we can also do coding here let's go to engine electronics let's see the fault code and we have mass or volume airflow sensor A circuit low. And also we can find the repair help right here. So possible symptoms will be malfunction indicator light on and power loss. And you can have um, the causes could be faulty wiring or connector to mass airflow sensor or the mass airflow sensor. This is very, this is very probable. Most of the times uh, it's just the wiring. Um, also, they uh, give you the solutions and 
a special note here in Volkswagen diesel vehicles from 95 to 2005, the G70 has a serious problem of slowly losing its performance, resu resulting in loss of power. Also on the instrument cluster, supply voltage, voltage too low. Probably, I think this car has um, run out of battery and uh, it jump started with the car and then probably that's that's the reason of all these errors because the car is running great. Let's go to driver's door, door electronics. Read fault code. Yeah, supply voltage too low. Here's the door control module, supply voltage too low. Probably because of the uh, of the power loss on this car and we can do some action test actuation test basically but look here you can see them as a list which is uh, much more uh, convenient you can do lowering of front window actuation time 10 seconds you can continue by clicking yes and start and the window is going down very nice let's clear the fault codes So it's clearing, it's clearing them one by one. As I was saying, the, the car is running great. I think that's why it has so many, so many errors because of, of the power loss. We can also do a rescan if we want after that. We won't do that in this test right now because it's going to be too long. Uh, let's go back and see what else we got. We got uh, the hot function, so all the things that we can do on this car we got the oil reset we got the battery management dpf electronic parking brake injectors the start stop this car doesn't have a, a start stop also let's do another vin an auto detect so we can uh, we can see some uh, some live da data and read data stream now the problem is i'm not sure if this is uh, only specific to volkswagen but you don't have a full list of the uh, of the channel you have to input it manually so let's go to the first channel 001 so right here you have the injector quantities let's just start the car So you can see the uh, injector quantities, pressure, temperature, and all that. Uh, you can go to the next channel, so on and so forth. And yes, I have later found out that this is the Volkswagen protocol. You can only see the live data by going through all the channels. You don't see them as a list. That is the Volkswagen protocol. On other brands, they can look different. Now here we have a problem on this uh, VW. My friend here called me because uh, he just couldn't start a uh, forced regen with the tools that he had. So uh, we can see that the old dash is lit up with errors uh, and I want to start a forced regeneration. Now going into the hot functions, looking for the DPF, select VW and go to DPF regeneration is just as simple as that select the engine capacity and we can see that the test requirements are right here the tool is checking that all of them are met and we can start the regeneration process So it's been probably around 45 minutes now and uh, starting to get close to uh, 600 degrees after the after the DPF. Unfortunately, what I, what I don't like is that I don't see a graph or showing the, the status bar or, or the progress bar. Um, it just shows me the, um, the temperatures and that's it. Because if I want to uh, 
on, if I want to go into the next menu, if I'm gonna press OK, it's gonna ask me if I want to exit the regeneration function. So, uh, so it's been close to 45 minutes now. It's not smoking anymore on the exhaust. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna end it now and see what happens. Implementation failed. Now, even if it's saying that the region has failed, that is not necessarily true because it has been doing the region for about 45 minutes and the soot accumulation has definitely dropped. Going into the fold code, I am erasing the old one and the fold has been cleared. Here we can see that all the lights from the dash are gone, so job is done. Another quick test, and this is a Mazda, and just doing a quick scan and deleting some errors, but just check out how fast the scan is done, almost instantaneous. Well, not a lot of modules on this car, but still impressive. Now let's jump on the big boys, because after all, this scan tool is heavy duty, meaning it's compatible with trucks and agricultural vehicles. Starting a scan on this uh, DAF XF and see how it performs. Now this was a bit strange, because while reading the VIN code, the tool is finding the VIN, but the message pop-up is saying that the VIN recognition has failed. Anyway, strange as the VIN was right there on the screen. Now you can still go manual and choose the mark and model manually, not a big problem, but hopefully something they will update in the future. You can see here that it's starting the auto scan without any problems. And boy, we have a whole list of errors. Well, after all, it's a DAF. Going into the engine module and we can find information, trouble codes, data list, uh, active tests and special functions. So quite a few functions here. As for the special functions, we can go into the VMAX menu where you can set the top speed of the truck, not recommended if you're not authorized to do so. You can go into the pumps and you can also do injector coding, which is nice too. Also on the fall codes, you can find some uh, repair infos, just like you find them in the passenger vehicles. Pretty nice. Now let's erase all these codes and see what the permanent ones are. As you can see, it's erasing some of them, but the permanent ones are still present in the list. There are other tests in the hot functions menu here, and you can even do uh, add blue filter leakage tests, uh, air circuit tests, add blue circuit test with uh, injection of add blue, or an uh, automatic system check test. Here you can see the result of the test saying that the dosing valve is stuck open and the air pressure before and after the orifice is too low or too high. Now let's do another quick test and this time on this MAN and see how it performs. Again, failing to read the VIN, but no problem if you go in manually and do the selection. 
As a remark, these tools work better when they are connected to the internet, and in this case, it was not connected. Maybe by doing a hotspot from your phone could help with this AutoVin function. Now, I must say that the protocol of the MAN is pretty strange. Now, once again, I'm not a mechanic or a technician. As far as I know, I might be doing the whole thing wrong. But anyway, I was still able to go into the different modules and check them for errors. But, but I didn't find a full system check function. Maybe that's just the protocol of the MAN. You can also do active tests on this truck, such as bleeding the AdBlue valve, activate uh, pumps or many other. Also capable of live data information, so you can check things like oil or fuel pressure and injection quantities. Now, so far, the Ansel V6 Pro HD has turned out to be pretty reliable. I didn't have any major issues going into modules on most of the cars I'm, I was testing. And I'm saying most because um, the only time it failed me was uh, I was trying to code something on a Volvo. But Volvos are known usually for having a bit more... It, it's complicated. You need special tools, especially to code stuff on, on Volvos. But in rest, even on the Jeep, on most European cars I've tested, even on trucks, as you've seen in the video, no problems, especially reading or uh, deleting faults. Um, going into the live data, you get all the streams there. A lot of special functions, but of course, they will depend on the vehicle brand and manufacturer. So links in the description. Hopefully you can get a discount code. I hope this video helped and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.